Oh, yeah. So um, this is gonna be a quick uh, green screen uh, tutorial, and uh, so let's just get straight to it. Uh, green screen effect with uh, Final Cut Pro. So basically, we go to File, Import, Import File. We import our video, of course, from our project folder. I already did that to me, uh, to mine thing. So I'm just gonna drag it into the timeline. Here it is, green screen um, attempt whatever and then you go and uh, basically what you want to do is double click on the clip so we have we go into the settings for it uh, we go to filter and uh, we can see that there's no filter so we're gonna add a effect filter so we go straight into effects tab and uh, after that, we go into video filters, we go to key, and we go to blue and green screen to add the effect for the green screen to basically disappear. So what that does is it takes anything that looks green or close to green and basically erases it. It makes the opacity just go away for that color alone. That's what it does basically. So you just take that, you drag it into your clip that has the green screen effect and then what happens here is under video filters we have our blue and green screen um, filter shown so what you want to do is in key mode where it says blue we have a green screen so basically we want to make blue into green so you bring down the drop down menu and change it to green filter then we go to color level and we bring this we adjust the slider all, uh, not all the way, but mostly to the left, and we see our green screen start to disappear. Color tolerance, I usually bring that all the way to the left, because the more you uh, bring it up, the more you still see green, so I just bring it to the left. Um, edge thinner, I uh, bring that up uh, not too much, just enough to get rid of the green on the edges of the person. See, you can still see some green around the edges, but what that does is it kind of cuts off the edges to make a more sharper uh, cut. Uh, edge fil feather, it basically s does feathering for the edges basically. If you're good with Photoshop, you know what that means. I usually bring that uh, about five or about six. That's good. I don't, I don't really use much feathering for my green screen. Um, effect and so yeah that's that and so basically got rid of most of the green there's just some some green showing here because of the um folds on the lighting was not that great so that that's what happens when you have bad lighting when you try to record a green screen but if you bring the slider more to the left kind of gets rid of it but also gets rid of some of the person we don't want that to happen so I'll just leave it uh, that much. Now, what you want to do is go into your project window and um, you want to take this. Um, you want to import a picture or whatever it is you want to put in the back of the person. So you just go and, of course, take it, the picture, and drag it into the timeline. And so the picture is on top of it, and we don't want that. We want to see the person in the front. So we take the clip and bring it above that picture and so basically what happens is with the clip above it we get the the green screen effect happening where everything greens disappeared and except the subject that we have that's not in green colors and so yeah now we had a background and um we want to probably adjust a few more things with the filter. Double click on it to get our filters back. Uh, we want to get rid of some of that. Uh, color tolerance. Uh, no, no, no. We just want to edge thin. And uh, not too much. Uh, you can just play around with this settings and, you know, until you get it just the way you want it pretty much and uh, it's too much feathering for me and so that's basically how you do the green screen and yeah in a nutshell 
so basically yeah. uh, now uh, to do motion we go into the motion tab we go back in time and uh, say we want to scale this up this person up a bit we go to the part that we want to start at we go and start the keyframe right there that's the first keyframe and then go forward in time in our scrubber and scroll forward and then we scale to whatever size we want and basically what happens is it automatically puts a keyframe there for you and uh, with that done as you go back in time you see it get smaller because the effect has been made so as you go up in time basically I get bigger and uh, I'm not playing this because um, it just needs rendering um, you could also view files without having to render if you go to RT and you change to unlimited RT uh, you want to bring the playback frame rate to dynamic and playback video quality to dynamic to uh, get it to play without your uh, Mac freezing up or whatever So that is that, and um, I'm just gonna change it back to safe RT because it does need rendering, whether we realize it or not. Rendering is actually very important; makes you know the work easier on the computer. Um, so we go to rotation. If we want to rotate this person, you start here, of course. You start at the point that you want to start the animation. You activate it by clicking the keyframe activator button, whatever you call that, and then you go forward in time again and say we want to rotate him uh, upside down. Yeah, it automatically does the keyframe as you can see again. And so, as we go back in time, we see the effect happening. So, basically, now he's just gonna get uh, scaled up and rotated upside down. Yeah, it's basically that, and uh, that's mostly motion and green screen, two uh, things we covered, and uh, at the end of course what you want to do is command R uh, to render your clip useful and not useless, yeah, just plain, but uh, yeah, we're just going to stop this video.